Okay guys, we are back with another edition of the Rising Storm 2 SDK tutorial series. Today I'm going to keep this video uh, somewhat short. I wanted to briefly go over how you would go about uh, creating your own custom sky materials uh, outside of the editor and then bringing that uh, sky into the editor for a custom sky if you uh, if the ones that are in the game just weren't cutting it for your environment. Uh, some people were recently discussing some more night maps and you know, none of those exist in the game so you'd have to create your own if you, if you wanted one. Um, to uh, find a sky dome, there's only one sky dome here in Rising Storm 2 that I'm aware of and it is, uh, it's actually not a dome, it's more of a, I guess a sphere. It's what you'll find in the sky in every map. You can uh, find it in the content browser by right clicking and go to find in content browser, a little shortcut I was recently informed of. You can also hit control B. Control B as in boy will open up uh, the object that you have clicked on in the content browser. Uh, so that's a little bit of a shortcut for that. But it, as you can see, the, the sky domes in Rising Storm 2 are not domes like they were uh, in Rising Storm 1. They are actually giant spheres, I guess, a giant ball. So you're placing this around your entire map. It goes below the terrain. It goes below ground. Um, and since these are a little bit larger models, you know, they're not the half hemisphere that we would, we were dealing with before, uh, the materials that are used on them are quite a bit larger. So um, I believe all of the sky materials in this game are going to be using a, a uh, material that has a texture on it uh, that's in the um, resolution uh, of it being 4096 by uh, 2048. So that's uh, 4K by 2K for, for those of you who like to use the shorthand. Uh, but if we open up this one right here, I'm just going to pop into, I clicked on a random material. And here we go. We can open up the textures. Now these are all the textures that are involved. If you do place a sky uh, on your map, getting a bit ahead of myself here if you do place a sky on your map and you want to change the material to another one that's in the game all you really need to do is right click on the sky itself and find the material that they're using they're all in this same package here VN sky and you can switch it out easily by you can either drag this onto there you can right click and assign it through the material selection you could go to the the meshes properties as well but that's how you would um, change it. This one's the uh, little bit darker, rainier type sky. Um, but the uh, all the skies in the game are all, uh, like I said, 4K by 2K. So let me get back to what the textures look like. This is what the texture looks like. And like I said, it's 4,096 pixels wide. It's 2,048 pixels uh, height-wise. And what we will want to do, um, I'll include a link to the, uh, they use TGA Targa files with a 32-bit, uh, because it's going to include the alpha map in it to uh, kind of give you the light source for this sky uh, in particular. But I went ahead and exported one of the skies out, and I'm going to pop it open here in Photoshop. So this is the sky we were just looking at. Um, but as you can see, once we export it out, it's in the TGA format. And it's uh, here 4096 by 2048. So if we're going to bring a new sky into the game, we want to keep it in those dimensions. Otherwise, you're going to get some weird stretching and so forth. A couple things I want to point out on the sky we have here that we're dealing with. Um, we'll look at the channels. You can see as the alpha map. This is what's kind of gonna, going to kind of give it uh, where the light source comes from once you uh, place a, a dominant light down on the map. And this is the area of the sky that's going to be emissive. So it's going to be the brighter part of the sky. Um, and when you create your own, you'll likely want to create an alpha map to go with it. Unless you're not too worried about a specific light source from uh, the, the sky material itself. Turn that back off. Another thing to note, as you can see, the um, bottom here, there is no, it's all black. So that's something you can keep when you create your own sky. Or if yours happens to bleed down into this area, not a huge deal. Um, but the uh, the skies that the uh, vanilla game uses are set up mostly like this. One other small thing. At the top here, do you notice how this is all 
pretty much the same color up here. The, the actual clouds and all that end up here. That's because this top part of the sky is going to be the peak of the inside of that that ball we looked at, that sphere. And if you are uh, if you have a bunch of stuff up at the top there, what you're going to have at the top of the sky, you can kind of see it here. Uh, you'll have a bunch of uh, stretching and where like pixels are colliding here. And if someone happens to look up, it might look kind of funny. It might not be very obvious at all, though, either. That's just something to keep in mind. If you're going to uh, bring in your own sky, maybe to make sure it doesn't look too silly at the very peak of the, the dome. Okay, when you're making your own sky, you can obviously probably Google for some images. Maybe you're really good with art and you want to, uh, you know, maybe take an actual photo that you've taken of a, of a sky picture and turn it into it. Uh, I'm not a very good artist and I'm not real good with photography. So a lot of times I rely on this website, CG Skies. They have a ton of skies. Uh, you can pay for some. They have a lot of free ones too. Uh, that are ne not necessarily uh, ultra high definition. We don't really need anything that crazy. S I believe some of the vanilla maps even use skies from this website. You can see a little watermark on some of them. But, uh, you know, we're not uh, going to get too crazy on here. But a lot of stuff you can see, there's a lot of variants. There's a lot of daytime skies. When you do get into the night skies, I will admit I was a little disappointed because, uh, I don't know, this doesn't really look like nighttime to me. And, you know, you got this blazing bright moon here in the middle. You can try one of these out if you're looking for a night sky. But uh, if I'm doing a night map, I'd probably use another approach, maybe just some stars and stuff like that. But there are tons of options on here when you find one you like. A lot of times you can download uh, over here. Here we go, the JPEG sample. Uh, you know, like I said, we're looking for a 4K by 2K. This is fairly close. If we download this, which I guess we'll just go ahead and do, we can uh, open this up in Photoshop, uh, reset the parameters for the resolution, and then bring it into the map. So we'll use this one as a, as a demo for uh, this little uh, tutorial here. Okay, now that we've downloaded the JPEG uh, sky, the free version, um, we've brought it into Photoshop or whatever photo editing software you like to use. First thing I'm going to do is just adjust this so it's uh, to the parameters we want. Uh, we want our width to be 4096 and we want our height to be 2048. So we'll go ahead and adjust that. Um, now this is pretty much ready to go if we weren't worried about an alpha map, uh, alpha layer uh, in, in it. Uh, since this does have a sun on it, uh, you know, maybe we'll have some illumination on there. What I'm going to do is just, uh, you know, if you're a little bit better in Photoshop, I'm, I'm no expert by any stretch, uh, you know, feel free to do this a different way. But just a quick and, I guess, dirty way to do this, I'm just going to make a copy of my colored layer. And I'm going to uh, just create a black and white version of it, which we can see right here. And then if I can... Uh, We'll merge these two together, but we'll, what I will then do is uh, cut this out or copy it. I guess we can hide it later. I'm going to add a new layer here. Automatically defaults to the alpha map. So now I have an alpha map, black and white, the white being the emissive parts of the, the sky material and the darker ones being the less emissive. So I'm going to disable or uh, hide the alpha map here. I'm going to... You know what, I'm going to just completely delete this layer because I don't need it anymore. And now we have uh, what we picked. So, uh, I'm sure that's all right. Now when we go to save this, we're going to click save as. Uh, and we can name it, you know, whatever we want to, blue sky or whatever. But the important thing, it's going to, we're going to want to save it as a Targa, TGA file. Alpha channels checked here, I think that's default. And then I want to make sure we save 32. Now, if we save it as a 24-bit, it's going to cut out the alpha channels. When we bring it in, it won't be there. So that's about it for that. Now, let's go back to the SDK and show you how we're going to import that real quick and plug it into our uh, sky. Okay, here we are back in the infamous demo map. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is... Uh, bring up the uh, sky materials that we went over with in the beginning of the video in the VN sky package we got the materials what we want to do is make a copy 
of one of these material instance constances and we're going to want to save it to our maps package so remember if I just start to type the first couple letters in the name of the map I can hit the down key and it'll automatically jump to the map uh, I'll might you know maybe we'll name this custom sky or we, you can name this whatever you want so I'm gonna click custom sky I, I'm also gonna add Mick on the end so I know it's a, a material instance uh, it should jump to it now that we've done it. As you can see, I've done an actual sky in here once already. The material instance constances are much more efficient and better to use. Uh, so I picked one that was kind of similar to the sky I had created in Photoshop. Now what I'm going to do, we want to import that texture that we uh, just made. I believe we called it blue sky. There it is, the TGA. Um, most of these we can leave default. Yes, we will leave all these default. If we wanted to rename it here, we could rename it. I'll just leave it blue sky for now. Click OK. And once the uh, gears start grinding here, if nothing crashes, go ahead and import that into the map. OK, here we have it's all in the same spot. Now, first thing I need to do, I haven't applied this to my sky. So I'm just going to drag this out here. You can see it changed to whatever sky they have here. But now what I want to do is plug in my new sky. So I'm going to open up the settings. I can double click the material instance constants right from the uh, content browser. What I want to do is go down here and find this where the texture is set for this. So this texture is plugged into this. But if you remember we're not messing with any of the vanilla game files. We made a copy of this so we can do whatever we want to it and there's no, uh, no issues there. So if I select my texture in the content browser click this green arrow it will plug it in right there but until I check this uh, box right here it won't actually activate any of the changes I've made so I'll go ahead and check that and that will activate the texture we just plugged in now you'll notice it's really there's not a whole lot to see I honestly don't like this cube view but this doesn't really help either uh, these uh, sky textures in the game this fake HDR deal it uses a lot of this uh, fog kind of uh, near the horizon. If you have a particular uh, texture you imported like we did that has a nice horizon and you're not seeing enough of it, uh, you can go in here and adjust this fog contrast. So you jack this number up a little bit. Uh, it's going to uh, kind of bring the fog down lower. Uh, you can also just lower the density. So uh, it gives you a little bit more of a defined horizon if that's something you want you know a lot of times you're going to have mountains and hills and stuff so they're not going to see the horizon quite as well but I've got little clouds and stuff like that in here now as you can see with our alpha map we're getting a little bit of kind of an emissive look right here where where our sun is and if you want to go in here play with all these settings this one gives it a little bit more of a blue look all of these things can be adjusted here you know if we wanted less color we could kick on the desaturation make it black and white if we wanted to um, or just turn that off but yeah you can play with a lot of these uh, feel for how you want it to look on your map and let's see how it looks when we apply it on here so uh, now in the material instance constant says you, there's nothing you need to save it automatically saves when you do that so I'm going to drag that onto there the lower uh, you know I've got fog on on this map so we can also adjust that as well because it was set more for that reddish sky but there is our um, sky there is our Sun see some clouds over there this thing's blocking quite a bit I'm gonna hide it for the moment. see you can see that we have that horizon set there so uh, this is just an example of how to bring your sky into the game want to make your own you know it'd be pretty cool to take a uh, like a high-res photo and bring it in I think that would be a really a uh, really unique way to uh, decorate your sky but uh, that's just how uh, the basic concept work as always if you have any questions or any of this was unclear or went too fast or rambling please leave a comment below or uh, um, some of your best resources are going to be in the modding discord I'll put a link down in the description I think the other one I had been using expired so uh, thanks for watching we'll see you on the next video